In this video, we're going to start assembly of the gondola glove, the Northern Ontario gondola glove. This is a gondola glove from Southern Ontario. You can see that the cup is a little thinner, and it's. You have to apologize the snow. We had a freak snow squall, but this is. A representation of the Southern Ontario and the Northern Ontario. This is the Northern Ontario. It's, these gloves are really old, so once they laugh, they are meant to go over your jacket and meant to have lots of space. Uh, that way, you can get them on and off because at minus 40, you want to be able to shove your hand in right away and get it warm. So you're going to take your two chunks, two chunks of leather. Right, there's going to be some items that I have that I recommend, but you don't necessarily need. And this is this is one of those things that I recommend, but don't necessarily need. This thing, uh, it's a basically a big paper clip. So you're going to line up all your edges here. And you're going to clip this on. I use this just to keep everything level and straight. You don't necessarily need it. Uh, as well, I use a punch. You don't necessarily need it. For the ones that can do beadwork, your beading needle will easily go through this leather without any punches at all and all you do is your standard sewing. I'm using artificial sinew again that way you don't have to worry about the threads rotting because they're not, not cotton. Um, you thread it, the wax holds it onto itself you don't need anything special. So all you do is you punch you just punch right at the edge about every centimeter or so about a quarter inch in see, and as you can see and you just continue all the way down one side now this is also where you have your thumb your thumb is going to be here want to make sure when you do your when you do your thumb make sure they're opposite so on this one that I've pre-started I cut on this side so on this one I'd cut there where I have a line I put a line from the pattern and I'd cut on that side so Everybody knows how to sew. It's in, out, in, out. Um, you go all the way down one side, then all the way back. Leave a little at the end here. When you're sewing, leave a little bit. Leave a little bit for this, because this makes it much easier if you can fold this up just a little bit, that quarter inch. Take that quarter inch, and you, you just fold it like that, and you sew. That's how you'd put your cuffs on. Cuffs on, same thing on the other side when it flips over. When you're done sewing, when you're flipped over, it's the same deal. You line this up. this up and sew all the way across and this is thinner leather so if you don't exactly line it up you can stretch it it has a little degree of stretch and that's how you would attach your cuffs on 
and it's just a continuous sew. You sew one way. Okay, you, you'd start up here. You'd sew. I do this in segments and chunks. I do this top top area first. Then I put the cuffs on. Then I complete by finishing the cuffs on either side. Then you leave an inch towards the end. Just leave that inch for when you do make a liner. You can fold it in on itself and attach it. That cleans it up. That way your edge looks clean. Unless you're going to use fur. Uh, the best place I found where you can buy fur is just go to the thrift store and re-salvage some uh, fur that's already been gently used already. Uh, you can go to any thrift store. You can even recycle leather from there. You buy a leather jacket and you put the suede side out. This one is an old leather jacket that I turned inside out. And I put the cuffs on made the liner for the inside. This is also why you keep the liner a quarter inch smaller. Smaller because you're using that quarter inch so now you're going to be making the liner so even smaller when you do your own liner. Uh, for those ones that are sensitive to wool you can make it out of other fabric. Just wool is the only only known substance out there that can hold its insulation value when it's wet. That's why I use wool. Um, I've already went ahead and take your pencil, line all this up on this side, and you would draw so you can match these up a little bit. Then you just trim that off. Now I've already sewn this one partially because I wanted to show you the thumb. Uh, everything else is straightforward sewing except for the thumb. The thumb is a little different. So at this point, so you're right at the edge there. So at this point, you treat this side here, this side as the continuation of this. So you'd sew all the way around around here down and you even fold this up this gets folded up here and here so you can continue your seam so you can sew you just sew down here I will show you a little bit now how this is going I still can put this is where this is where you use this as your this is what I like this for that's why I kinda recommended but not necessary because you can clip this so it kinda holds it in place for when you're doing this portion of your work This time I'm going to put just one more right there, one more hole. This is to seal your thumb area. Now this is where you can pinch it. Pinch it now. Now you continue your punches along the thumb. Quarter inch in, of course. You want to make sure you get both chunks of leather. Do 
doing this fast to show you guys and here's also a little trick that I do is just at this point where the thumb meets I just wrap it around and over it just helps it stay shut then you continue your in out pattern tangled on a piece of stuff that was around me. Now this is a straight stitch at the moment, I'm just going in and out. When you go back the other way, you end up turning it into a saddle stitch. Saddle stitch usually takes two needles and you'd be doing both sides at the same time. This is a one one needle style saddle switch or saddle stitch. And you just continue Now for you that, for those of you that are using uh, embroidery needles, it, it will easily punch through this leather because it's thin. This is deer hide versus moose. Up north, they'd be traditionally made with moose. Um, I'm using deer hide. It's a little bit cheaper. It's a little bit easier to work with. And I recommend using the thinner, thinner leather until you get used to working with leather. Because if you were just to keep the straight line stitch the way you are now, when you would turn it inside out, you would see little gaps. It wouldn't be as tight. But when you come back around, when you come back around, you don't see that. It'll hold it tighter. This is where you just move this down the road. Move it to this section down here. And just continue on your thumb. Now when you're making the, uh, this is right, this looks like a right handed right now, but it's actually going to be your left hand. Because when you turn it inside out, uh, the main thing to remember is when you make your own liner for it, is that stitches hit stitches. So you turn the outside, you turn the outside the other way and then you uh, for the liner you don't turn it inside out at all and if you 
you're like me, you'll catch everything on the table with your string. Just take your time. The only person that you're competing with is yourself. So there's no right or wrong way to really do this. I'm just showing you the way I do it. And the way I show people how to do it. Now I eyeball it. I'm pretty good at keeping an even space for my stitch. Um, you can, you can uh, measure it out for your stitch. I know my first pair. I didn't have a punch or anything else that I made. Everything was done by eye. And it was uh, there was no punch involved. And the main reason I'm taking so much time around the thumb is that your thumb will get the most amount of work. So you got to make sure you do it correctly. And one right. You're going to have to, yeah, one right there. It's a little further away than I'd like, but... It's all right. The good thing is, is that the Holes are already pre-punched this way. Holes are already pre-punched for when you go the opposite way. So, now you're going to go down this part of the thumb. So you have to bunch it up a bit. This is where I... My personal preference is 
that comes in so handy. It holds it, holds it to where you want it. Um, but then again, there again, it's not a, it's not a requirement. It's more of a preference. Again, this is where I loop over because that's another stress spot for the thumb. So I loop over to seal it, then I continue doing in and out. You can go around twice if you want an extra stitch there. I think guess this time we'll do an extra one just to reinforce that. There's a lot of strain put on that part of the area. So there we've done that. And needles, I've had good luck with needles from the dollar store. And you buy this household pack. This household pack seems to work pretty good. You have the larger needles what you want. I usually use the upholstery or carpet needles. They seem to work really great for the artificial sinew to fit in. I usually do a little bit at a time for punching. So my thread's getting a little frayed. It's all right. It's just easier to tangle right now. That's all. It's because you're going in of these holes and you're slowly taking the wax off that artificial sinew. But it's a. It's not cotton, so therefore it doesn't rot. So your gloves will last a very, very long time. I don't want to date myself, but I know uh, uh, I've had I've had these gloves an extremely long time. And I use them every winter. I haven't babied them at all. Oops. That's alright if you want to go around like that. Then we just start doing the reverse in and out.
I'm just going to clean that out, but no one will see that anyways. It'll be good and strong. Now what you're doing is you're turning your straight line stitch into a saddle stitch. It's probably not the proper names for these. I'm not a expert on sewing per se. I know enough to get by for sewing. Just going to go underneath this thread here with the line so I can be on this side and continue the stitching. I will show you what that looks like now. So basically you continue on all the way, you go down to here, leave a little bit of a gap, that way you can at least fold up, then all the way down. I normally wouldn't do this, but there's the seam that you've just done, there's your thumb. seam, it's tight, no snow will get in there, no water will get in there. <clears throat> so I'm going to let you do your two parts there and when we come back we'll put the cuffs on and I'll show you that. So enjoy. <laughs> 